Please let me know down below if you have any like spooky recommendations that you really like because I love those kind of stories and I'm always looking for more great ones so like I said let me know down below some of your favorites so that I can pick them up. everybody it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my fifth annual spooky book recommendations video I have four other videos on this topic so if you are interested in checking those out I'll leave them all linked down below obviously if I talked about books in those videos I'm not going to be talking about them in this video I don't know about you guys but I just think that October is like the perfect time to read spooky books. I don't know if it's because it's like dark and dreary outside or what, but October is the time, man. So here are some spooky recommendations for y'all. I usually only choose about five books for this video, but this year, since it is the fifth annual, I'm feeling a little bit frisky and I chose six for you all. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> The first book I have is In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. This book follows a woman named Lenora Shaw who is unexpectedly invited to a hen weekend by one of her friends who she has not talked to in 10 years. When she arrives at the glass house in the middle of the woods, she gets a very uneasy feeling and as the tension rises as the night goes on, she quickly realizes that she is not alone in this forest. Then 48 hours later, Nora awakens in the hospital with no memory of the night before. The only thing she is certain of is that somebody is dead and it's like the story of that. It is the author's debut novel which you would not realize from reading it. Nora is a very unreliable narrator and trying to figure out what is true and what is not true in this story is really interesting. There's also like a side character named Flo who just becomes more and more unhinged as the story goes on and it was really creepy to watch her downfall. I also think that this book is perfect for like the spooky book recommendations video because of the setting of the book. It's in this like recluse glass house in the middle of nowhere in the woods and as you're reading Nora like describes like seeing shadows outside and like she's not sure if they're the only people there and blah 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 and it's just really spooky. I also really like the ending because it is not what you expected so I definitely recommend you guys check it out if you're not into being able to call the ending right away. I just think like the bachelorette party gone wrong trope is like a lot of fun so I was here for it. I really enjoyed it and hopefully you guys will too if you end up reading it. The next book I picked out is called Grimoire Noir. This is by Vera Greentea and Yenna Bogoth. It is a graphic novel. I just wanted to pick something that wasn't a chapter book because, you know, I want a variety on my list. So, graphic novel. So this book follows Bucky Orson who wants nothing more than to find his little sister who disappeared one day from their room without a trace. At first his parents just think that she's playing a little trick on them because she is a witch and is able to turn invisible. But as time goes on and Heidi does not return home, they begin to think that maybe she was kidnapped. So determined to find his little sister, Bucky begins an investigation of his home into the town and the townspeople and he discovers a little bit more than he bargained for. So I chose this book because the artwork is so spooky and just so, so good in my opinion. Like it really gives the atmosphere of the book like a really creepy vibe. Like the colors are very like muted and just like dark so it kind of gives that spookiness to it. The book also has like a paranormal aspect to it which I really liked. I just think that paranormal things in books automatically makes it spooky. I also really liked that the females in this book were the ones who had the magical abilities and they kind of had a curse on them where they weren't allowed to leave the town. It was just really interesting to read and learn more about them but yeah like I said definitely a very spooky atmosphere of this book with paranormal aspects that I definitely recommend you guys check out. I kind of want to reread it now that I'm looking at it because it's a lot of fun. I just think that this is like a really good spooky Halloween book to read and I definitely recommend you guys check it out for the artwork alone because it is so well done. The next book I have is called The Call by Peter O'Gulen and this follows a group of children in Ireland who since a very young age has been trained to have their chance at something called The Call. 
At some point they will awaken scared and alone in a strange land and they will hear a horn which signals the beginning of the call which means that they are going to be hunted by the Sidhi which are a type of cruel fairy that will hunt them down and torture and kill them. Once called, the children must survive in the Greylands for three minutes. If they are able to do that, they will be sent back home by the Sidhi as one of the survivors. This book mostly follows a little girl named Nessa who everybody underestimates and she is determined to be one of the survivors in the call and it's like the story of that. I picked this solely because the whole idea of the call is terrifying to me. Like I do not want to be sent naked and alone into some creepy island land where there's cruel fae hunting me to torture and kill me. Like, that does not sound like a good time to me. I don't know if it does to you, but it doesn't to me. The book is very fast-paced and action-paced, but it does have a lot of gore and it's very violent, so that if that's something that you're not into, don't pick this book up. I don't recommend it to you, but if that's something you're okay with, then pick it up. Keep in mind that it's about children. So, you know, it is children being tortured and killed, so maybe, like, if that's not you know, your thing, which it, I'm hoping it's not your thing, then go into it with caution is what I'm saying. But I will say that I liked how Nessa, the main character, her disability was not putting her at a disadvantage. She was so determined to like be like everybody else, which I really liked seeing. But yeah, if you uh, want to read about a creepy situation that you don't want to get into, then this is the book for you. <laughs> the next book I have, I absolutely adored when I read it. I was obsessed with it. It is House of Salt and Sorrow by Erin A. Craig. This book follows Annalee and her sisters who live a very sheltered life up in the manor with their father and stepmother. There used to be 12 sisters, but four have died in mysterious ways. The town folk are beginning to think that the family has been cursed by the gods, and Annalie is beginning to think so as well. So Annalie decides that she is going to investigate the deaths of her sisters with the help of a mysterious stranger, but the remaining sisters decide that they are going to begin sneaking off to dance in extravagant balls at night. So Annalie must decide whether or not to join her sisters or continue this investigation to figure out who is killing her sisters off before he strikes again. And it's like the story of that. I chose this book because of the setting. Highmore, just the way it's described, just feels so creepy to me. And there's also a lot of description about the ghostly figures that Annalie conjures up, which I think is super spooky. Annalie is also a very unreliable narrator, which in my opinion, just makes books more creepy and spooky because you never know what is actually the truth and what isn't. So any book with an unreliable narrator usually ends up on my spooky recommendation list. But this is a retelling of The Twelve Dancing Princesses, which I have never personally read, which is maybe why I enjoyed this book so much because I wasn't able to compare the two together. But I loved it and I definitely recommend if you want like a spooky setting around Halloween, this is your book. The next book I have is Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. I put Wicked Deep on my last recommendation video or my round three. I'm not 100% sure, but I know that I've talked about this author before. I really like her writing. This book follows Nora Walker, who lives in a town where everybody believes that her and her family are witches that have a special connection to the Wicker Woods. One night while wandering the woods, Nora ends up finding a boy who has actually been missing for two weeks now. As Nora spends more time with Oliver, she begins to uncover some secrets that he's been hiding from her, as well as some secrets about the night that he disappeared. I chose this book because of the woods. They are just really creepy the way they're described and the way that they interact with Nora is really interesting. I'm a big fan of witchy books so when I found out that this was about a witch I was so here for it. I definitely like The Wicked Deep more so if I were to have to recommend a Shea Earnshaw book, I would say read The Wicked Deep before you read this one. It's a little bit repetitive in its writing style, so it's kind of annoying. It does make sense for how the book ends up, but it just like kind of rubbed me the wrong way while I was reading it. And then when it got to the point where I was like, oh, this, this is why. I understand why that was chosen, but I still don't like repetition in books, so take that as you will. But like I said, I chose this for the spooky recommendations because of the woods. I think they're really cool, so yeah, now. 
And then the final book for round five of my spooky book recommendations is The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. This book follows a small town called Four Pass, which has four founding families because their ancestors sacrificed themselves to keep the monster that dwells in the forest at bay. Each family has a supernatural power that helps bind this monster in the forest, but they only have this power to help protect the village if they complete a ritual when they turn 16. Violet Saunders is the daughter of one of these families and she doesn't know anything about these rituals or their history, but her mother decides to move back to Four Paths to be closer to her sister. Upon arriving back in Four Paths, she meets the children of the other three founding families. She learns a little bit about the history of her family and what it means to be one of the founding families, and she needs to decide who she can trust and who she can't in order to protect the town. The town in this book and the beast that is dwelling in this forest is so creepy. I loved every second of this book. As you're reading, you learn more about the backstory of the town and what it means to be in the founding family and how they sacrificed themselves in order to protect the town, and it was just so cool and intriguing to read about. As you're reading, you also discover more about the founding families and the powers that they possess. They each have a different power and the ritual that they have to perform in order to gain these powers are all different from each other and they're not allowed to to talk to one another about it, which I found really interesting. I also listened to this on audiobook, so maybe that's why I felt that it was more spooky than other people. I know that some people were like a little disappointed, but the audiobook was really good and it had like that spooky music playing and stuff, so I don't know if that helped with my experience, but I really enjoyed this. I still have not picked up the second book in the series, which I really need to because I just want to know what happens to these characters because I honestly really enjoyed all of them and I want to know where they're at now, so I'm definitely going to try to find a copy of the next book. I think it's called like The Deck of Omens or something like that, but definitely recommend for Halloween time because the spooky beast thing is just a great time. <laughs> Alright everybody, so that was round five of my annual spooky recommendations. Let me know down below if you have read any of these, what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!